Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Sunday. It's December 10th. Hope you're having a great weekend. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the stock SNDL. We're going to take a look at the chart. There's a monster swing opportunity that I want to share with everybody. And first and foremost, this is not financial advice. As always, this is for entertainment and informational purposes only. My own thoughts and opinions. And you should never, ever buy anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. So we'll go over this monster swing trade opportunity that could present itself as early as, well, realistically tomorrow. We'll see support and resistance levels and what we need to be looking out for to see confirmation. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It does not cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. You can also follow us over on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. And we recently signed up for Rumble and Odyssey as well, so you can follow us over on those platforms. So we'll take a look at SNDL here on the daily time frame. We do have this pennant and tightening range, realistically, that is tightening up here for the last couple of months. There's multiple inside bars on the monthly time frame. So when you when you look at the daily time frame, or if you look at a lower level time frame and you see very choppy action, like lower highs, lower low, like high, sorry, low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low, that's a type of equilibrium. And if it's happening like that on the daily time frame, you can see here low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low, lower high, bear break, but held support there perfectly at 139 and then 140. So essentially double bottom back into a daily bounce, but again, continuing to find resistance there. And now we're just another higher low tightening up. So when that happens on the hourly time frame, you can zoom out to say the daily and it'd more than likely be daily inside bars. But we're on the daily time frame, meaning every candle is represented by one day. So if we zoom out to the monthly time frame, you can see here that it's two monthly inside bars in a row. So that just means that we're tightening up. And usually you see that tightening range and equilibrium with lower highs higher low, the low high, higher low, lower high, higher low, and it's just tightening up, right? And we're looking for a break, it's imminent, we just need to look at support and resistance. So right now, there's a swing opportunity that's presenting itself, and I'm gonna show how it's very similar to the CGC chart as well. And that's usually what happens when we're looking toward a multi-year bear market bottom. The names that are the beaten down the most tend to recover quicker, and usually first, and see the most percentage gains. Like think of your Auroras, think of your Canopies, right? Those were beaten down the most and there was as much FUD around those as possible. So when those bounce, usually they bounce the, the most, the highest, the, the most gains and the quickest, right? And usually first based on how beaten down they were. So we'll bring up the CGC chart in just a moment. But this swing opportunity is basically playing off this inside bar, monthly inside bar bull break. So key resistance is gonna be at 161. If we go to the daily time frame, you can see here that we had a double top there at 161 as well, which is when this tightening range and equilibrium started. So 161 is the key resistance. If we get over that, we could be heading to north of $2 very, very quickly. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, we're also trying to avoid this weekly downtrend with a lower high and a lower low. So key support is going to be there at 131, and that's also the low. If we go to the monthly candle, um, it's actually 135 is the low. But the previous monthly candle before that is 131. So if we break 135, we start monthly consolidation and we bear break out of this monthly inside bar. You could, there's two ways you could do this, in my opinion. Well, there's multiple ways, but there's two ways that I would probably do it. But again, not financial advice. This is just my own thoughts and opinions I'm thinking out loud. So two ways I would play this. And then I'll give my preferred method in just a moment. You could play on a monthly support test. So let's say we come down to that 135 area, 131. You could enter there with a stop below 125, the all time low. And then if we lost 125, that would be a monthly lower low in, and we wouldn't confirm the monthly uptrend. Right now we're just looking for monthly uptrends like the rest of the sector. We have our low, high, we're scouting the monthly higher low, and then we need the higher high. So again, a, an example, something that I've been using for a while now is Cure Leaf. It's already done it. It's already in a monthly uptrend. So we have a low, high, higher low and higher high monthly uptrend confirmed and then it even came down and tested that support and held that key monthly support there and maintained the monthly uptrend now we're starting the monthly bounce so basically SNDL is right here it's forming the higher low now we need the higher high so if we go to SNDL again low high higher low now we need the higher high so that would be one way to play it would be entering it 
you know, closer to support. If we come back down and test, you know, 142, that support trend line, or you could try to get it, start to scale in, you could start to scale in now, another one at 140, if we go to, down to 135, enter again, and another one at 131, you could even enter another one at 125, and then set your stop below that. That's one way to play it. Or you could enter on a resistance break. So if we break 161, which is the double top there on the daily and also the high of last month, then the monthly bounce will be underway. And then we have a lack of resistance until 236. And if a lot of our other names are confirming monthly uptrends, we can expect the rest of the names in the sector to potentially do the same thing as well. Look at AYR, low, high, higher, low, and higher, high, higher, low, now looking for another higher high. So AYR, Cure Leaf, great examples of what we're looking for. And again, if the rest of the sector starting to do it slowly but surely one by one that increases the odds and probabilities that we could see SNDL do it as well. So this could be a monster swing opportunity. Basically, I already have SNDL in my long-term no touch account, so I'm I'm just bought, I bought that, I hold it. I'll dollar cost average, I won't add that to my long-term portfolio again until unless we drop below 125. I'm pretty happy with that position, but I might look to do a swing trade here. I was talking to uh, Pow Group private uh, community member, you know who you are. We were discussing this trade opportunity and he believes that he's going to enter closer to that support if we get there but he said he may enter if we break 161 but he would rather play off of support which is fine everybody is different personally i'm not really looking for a day trade it's going to be more of a swing trade so i'm going to be looking to play on a break of 161 if we break 161 i have an alert set for 162 and i will enter on a break of that when the monthly bounce starts and then I will look to swing that for about 47% of upside, which is just to price action resistance. And then what you could do is that you could set your stop uh, just below it, use a tight stop. You could set it at the low of last month as well, 135, depending on the size of the position. If you're, a will if you're willing to uh, risk a little bit more, essentially that'd be about a 15% loss. So if you're using a large capital amount, then maybe 15 is too too much for you but if we enter if you enter at a break of 161 you could set a, a tight stop from there you know maybe risk two three five percent however much you're comfortable with to make if we go back to like i said price action resistance that's about a 47 percent upside right so that's great to risk to reward upside but if we break 236 then it's monthly uptrend confirmed and again look what happened to names like cure leaf when it confirmed its monthly uptrend low high higher low after confirming its monthly uptrend it went up another 40 percent Right, so if this is SNDL's moment to shine and confirm a monthly uptrend, and it goes up another forty percent from there, we could be targeting EMA twenty six, which is about one hundred and thirty two percent from here, right? And a lot of their names are starting to tar uh, to target their monthly EMA twenty six. And again, we'll use Cureleaf. It actually got above its monthly EMA twenty six. So if SNDL were to do the same, monthly EMA twenty six is sitting there at three seventy eight. So this could be an absolute monster swing trade here which if we go back to monthly resistance there at EMA 26, that's about 136% trade opportunity, okay? So risk 15%, you know, you could even, depending, like I said, how much money you're gonna throw at it, you could even risk 20% to make upwards of 50 to 100 and, you know, 30% worth of gains. So that's great risk to reward. But like I said, I'm gonna be, I have an alert set for 162. So if you go to the day time frame, the daily time frame, and see here, I have a trend line at 162. When that crosses, when the price crosses that, horizontal line, it will alert me. And like I said, I will enter for a swing trade. And I recently signed up for Moomoo Moo as well, one of the sponsors on the channel. Um, this video isn't sponsored by them, but I'm just mentioning them um, because I did send some money over there. I'm gonna do a trade. I'll do a tutorial of Moomoo Moo as well. I'm gonna do a trade uh, example uh, on Moomoo Moo, and there'll be, I'll, I'll do a video on that in the future. So you, you'll you hear about more of that uh, in the tutorial on that here in a moment, but probably be over the next couple of days. But anyways, um, if you if you don't have trading view, there's links for this in the description as well. There, I will get a kickback. So if you want to set these alerts, you want to use trading view. I bought the the premium one during the Black Friday sales. There'll probably be another one come Boxing Day and whatnot. But uh, you can check out trading view. Links for that will be in the description. So like I said, I put the horizontal line here. If we break 162 then I will look to enter and play on this monthly bounce. And then what I wanna, and what's giving me confidence in this as well, and what I wanna share with everybody is how similar this was to CGC. And this is quite often what happens is we see different names run at different times, right? So it's sector rotation. Once interest starts to come back into the space, usually the names like the CGCs, the Auroras, that are the most beaten down, right, tend to run first. But it's not always the case, but usually it is. And then we start to see, 
you know, money will flow out of CGC and ACB into the SNDLs and the VFFs and the OGIs, and then it'll rotate back into the main, to the large caps like Tilray's and CGCs, right? Just ebbs and flows, and that's how the rotation game works. So I expect when CGC and ACB start to cool off, I think SNDL, OGI are going to be great beneficiaries of the next run. Even Cron's interesting as well. Cron's starting its monthly bounce. So again, if we go to the monthly time frame, how many people and how many, you know, how many companies... How many names are confirming monthly uptrends and starting their monthly bounce? The more, the better. So Cron, monthly bounce, breaking the high of last month. We have Tilray, breaking the high of last month. We have ACB, very close to breaking the high. We had 52, yeah, we broke it by half a penny. So starting the monthly bounce there, CGC starting the monthly bounce. If we go to OGI, OGI is a monthly inside bar as well. If we go to High Tide, High Tide starting the monthly bounce. So then we go to SNDL and we say, okay, we have two monthly inside bars. What are the odds that we start the monthly bounce on SNDL? Well, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty high since everything else pretty much is confirming monthly bounces this month, right? We take a look at Cureleaf for US, again, starting the monthly bounce. What about MSOS, the ETF that tracks all the major producers in the US? Monthly bounce. What about HH, HMMJ, the ETF in Canada? Monthly bounce. So like I said, I'm very confident, quite, quite you know, not 100%, nothing's ever guaranteed. The only guarantee is no guarantees, but I'm very close to 100% confident that this could be SNDL's time to shine and start its monthly bounce. So like I said, it's all about support there at 131 and resistance at 161. If we break 161, like I said, I think we're going to be heading up to that 236 area in a hurry. But like I said, the fact that it's starting its monthly bounce is great. Now, something I want to highlight here as well is how similar we are to CGC. CGC just did this, and it's kind of like a laggard play. Well, it is a laggard play. Well, kind of, because we don't know for sure yet, but I think it's going to be a laggard play. So we can form our best thesis, right? We give the bulls and the bear scenario. We look at support and resistance. We're SPY, the S&P 500 had, I think, the second highest weekly candle close ever. So that's going to be something to be watching out for as well. We haven't consolidated there on the weekly time frame in seven weeks. So meaning every single candle for the last seven weeks the low has been higher than the previous weekly candle low. So if we lose the low of last week on the S&P 500, we're gonna start weekly consolidation and pullback, and that's gonna be headwinds for the MJ sector. So make sure to be keeping an eye on SPY as well for direction. But like I said, CGC, we had this tightening, we had this pennant, we had this tightening range, we had the low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low, bull break. And then if you take the measured move here from this, uh, from this pennant, this triangle, and you go from the low to the, high, to the high there, it's saying we could be targeting about 92 cents, right? And we hit 82 cents, so we were very, very close to that breakout target. Now, something else that happened was we confirmed the daily uptrend with a higher low and higher high, and we had an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross as well while we were breaking out of that downward sloping resistance in that triangle. So now take a look at SNDL, very similar. We have our high, low of the dump, high of this bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low, lower high, double bottom right there at 139 and 140 and here we are back to resistance back to support now we're looking for the bull break and guess what we could see an ema 12 and 26 bull cross as we look for this bull break so it's very very similar to cgc and it looks like sndl could be an awesome laggard play in terms of the weekly time frame as well we're very close to seeing a week d uh, weekly macd bull cross we had the stochastic cross, cross bullish now we need a weekly candle close over that 10 week moving average at 150 and like I said, I think it's off to the races at that point. In terms of the weekly moving averages, we do have the 50 weekly there at 168. So like I said, that that 160 area is going to be very strong resistance. If we can get a candle close over that, we've got some runway to 271, which is the 100 weekly there. And we're seeing a daily 200-day uh, and 50-day moving average bull cross, which is a golden cross. So the last time that happened was on the run-up to February 2021 highs. Price was at about 40 bucks. Then we had the death cross. And then price came down, formed lower highs and lower lows. And then here we're seeing another golden cross and we were way more beaten down than we were the last time. So what I've been saying for a while is, is MJ, name, MJ names need to see golden crosses. They need to see monthly uptrends confirm, which we're very close to doing. We're forming the monthly higher low now. Now, if we break above 236, that monthly uptrend confirmed. And then we also need to see weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull crosses, which we've already seen that on SNDL. So now we just need the monthly uptrend to confirm. And like I said, we've already had our golden cross and it's all about 161 resistance from here. And like I said, I'll be entering 
on a break of that looking for the monthly bounce but let me know in the comments section below if you hold SNDL if you're going to take advantage of this mon monster swing trade opportunity let me know your thoughts and opinions I'd love to hear from you as always in the comment section below but make sure to not take this as financial advice it's just a trade idea my own thoughts and opinions and yeah hopefully it works I think it's going to be a very fruitful trade. So I'll keep everybody posted on the results, but going to end it there, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you again on the next video.